Therefore, it is now time for members' statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. For 140 years, Colbert's Bakery has been a local fixture on Godrich's West Street, offering everything from bread and cake to muffins, pies and tarts to locals and visitors alike as they head down to the harbour and the beautiful West Coast. Built in 1877 by David Cantlin, the bakery was later purchased by the Colbert family in 1942. Co-owner Darren Colbert is the third generation to work in the shop, and he is up each morning at 1 a.m. to begin the day's baking. His son, Evan, is the fourth generation of Colberts to work there, and he's been learning the ropes at his father's side so that one day he can take the reins over himself. Famous for their cream puffs and their donuts, the bakery also offers Canada's cupcake for Canada Day weekend. All of this is baked in the store's original brick oven, which was installed in 1881. Such a fixture is this family business and its baked goods that not even the F3 tornado in 2011 could deflate their spirits. In fact, despite the tornado shuttering the bakery for just under one year, it actually put the fire, oven's fire out that had burned non-stop for more than a century. But all that said, the team rallied together and opened their doors just 10 months later after making the necessary repairs. And you know, it was interesting. The Colbert family thought about, you know, closing doors, but after customers were lined up outside at six o'clock in the morning on the first day that they reopened, that put all doubts aside. It's a great place to stop when you're in Godrich. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from London, Fanshawe. I rise today to speak about the very serious problem that is impacting Ontario seniors and thousands of workers across the province. As the NDP critic for seniors' home care and long-term care, I am closely watching how the vast changes stemming from Bills 41 and 89 will impact our seniors and the community caregivers. So it is highly concerning that the language that pr protected public dollars from going to for-profit companies was conspicuously absent from both of these bills. If this government genuinely believes in our public health care system, why did it deliberately remove the very language that protects our health care dollars from going to profit? Yesterday, when I asked the question of the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, he indicated that he had placed a moratorium on CCAC contracts for community care. I found that response highly troubling, as the minister had promised to address the failing through regulations. You made the promise to stakeholders who have urged you to protect non-profit services, and you reneged. It's quite clear to me, to my NDP colleagues and to Ontario seniors, that the Win Liberals, what the Lib Win Liberals' intentions are. You plan to privatize community support services so you can help your Liberal friends to set up for-profit agencies and make money off the backs of seniors who depend on community support services. It's time for this government to stop, play to stop playing we know best with people's lives and stop rigging the system for profits. Thank you. Thank you. Member Sanders, member from Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to extend a warm welcome. Ve hoş geldiniz, uh, the members of Federation of Canadian Turkish Association to Queen's Park, the FCTA. This past weekend, members of the FCTA, along with legislators, councillors, community leaders, and of course children, gathered in the community at the Macedonian Community Centre to celebrate the Multicultural Children's Day Festival. Children from a variety of different ethnic communities gathered in traditional dress to sing songs, share culture, and perform their national folk dances. Having lived in Turkey for several years prior to my election as an MPP, I had the incredible opportunity to experience the vibrancy of the Turkish culture and to see what a special day this is for the Turkish community firsthand. I'm honoured to rise today to recognize April 23rd as a day dedicated to the Turkish children who symbolize the future of a new nation, a tradition that began on April 23, 1920, and laid the foundation for the Republic. Recognized by the United Nations and celebrated around the world, this day is an opportunity to see children from diverse communities come together and celebrate their differences, a lesson we might all learn. 
I would like to extend a warm thank you to the FCTA and the Turkic Assembly of Canada for bringing Toronto's diverse community together in celebration of International Children's Day. Thank you. Teshi Kuradira. Thank you. Other member statements, the member from Perth, Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, today I want to highlight the excellent work that the Think Team of the Think Team in Perth, Wellington. The Think Team is a group of high school students who are educating people about important health issues, including tobacco. One of their current campaigns is to build awareness around the issue of actors smoking in movies. Research shows that cigarette smoking in movies can strongly influence kids to start smoking. Here's an alarming statistic. In 2009, there were over 1.1 billion tobacco impressions made on moviegoers in Canadian theatres during youth-related films. The Ontario Tobacco Research Unit estimates that 185,000 of today's children and teens will start smoking because of exposure to smoking in movies. The, the Think Team is calling for a simple but powerful change. They want to see new movies with actors smoking receive an 18A rating. This could have a great impact on the well-being of our kids. It would help take the glamour and cool factor out of smoking on screen. I had the pleasure of hosting a few members of the Think Team at my constituency office in February. Nikki Van Bockel and Rachel Claver are both high school students in my riding, and Lindsay O'Donnell is the Youth Engagement Coordinator with the Perth District Health Unit. On March 6th, I tabled a petition from the Think Team that made a strong case for change and requests that the Standing Committee and government agencies look at this issue. I hope this government will take the Think Team's advice and move to address this important issue. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members of statement, the member from Temiskimi Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Over the last uh, week or week or a little bit longer, there's been several uh, announcements made by the American administration that have had severe re will, could have, and have had severe repercussions in my riding and across, uh, across Ontario. And the first was uh, President, Trump, President Trump's um, remarks regarding the dairy industry. And hopefully he, uh, the administration will realize that the, our dairy industry is not the threat to the American industry that he believes it is. But the second, uh, now that the Americans have posed uh, have put on a 20% duty on American softwood, American Canadian softwood, that has the potential to hurt our industry severely. And the fact that this duty is retroactive is extremely punitive. We stand with the Canadian government. I believe everyone in this legislature stands with the Canadian government and with the Canadian negotiators to ensure that they put on a solid force to, to maintain our free and fair trade environment with the Americans. We have, we have enjoyed a good trading relationship. It has had its bumps over the years, but we have had a good trading relationship, and we need to maintain that trading relationship, and we need to ensure that it is a fair trading relationship for all sides, and I believe we have, we have that. We need to maintain it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members of statements? The members from Ajax Speaker, our Grandview Children's Centre has plans for a $50 million multi-story centre for pediatric expertise to be built in Ajax for over 5,600 children. I had a lengthy telephone conversation with former MPP and long-serving Pickery Mayor Wayne Arthurs this week and his wife Susan. One of Wayne and Susan's children had audiology issues and attended Grandview until he aged out. I was there with Wayne over 12 years ago before 2006, and in March 2015, MPP McCharles and I, MPP Anderson, MPP French, former MPP Christine Elliott, and now Ontario's first patient advocate, and MPP Scott wrote our always helpful Premier Kathleen Wynne and the Minister of Finance, Charles Sousa, in support of Grandview Children's Centre expansion. MP Cohn is new in Elliott's writing and also very supportive. Granville Anderson and I were with Honourable McCharles when she presented an 85,000 commitment. Her own son was a client of Grandview, so she knew firsthand of their great work. And in November 2015, Ajax Mayor Steve Parrish and Ajax Council announced the granting of a five-acre parcel of land in North Ajax. I was also proud when I announced the very first Ontario government of a half a million dollars capital grant 
for this planning site redevelopment in 2017. The Grandview Finance Committee and their volunteers are just a fraction over an $8 million shortfall waiting for the announcement and pre -existing, on pre-existing committed financial donors. Thank you for the dedication of the CEO, Lorraine Sunson Manor, Senior Advisor, the awesome Donna McFarland, and as always, Grandview Foundation Chair Brian Yetman, and of course, Board Chair Judy Robinson. We await the 2017 budget or later, and as Yogi Berra once said, it ain't over till it's over. We'll be here for you always. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Leeds Grenville. Thanks, Speaker. I rise to address a concern to Leeds Grenville residents and tens of thousands of motorists traveling Highway 401 through my riding daily. We all know highway construction is necessary, but it's critical to plan work to minimize disruption to motorists and the movement of goods key to our economy while ensuring public safety. I'm hearing MTO's planning is off course on a bridge repair project on the 401 at Highway 137. As one constituent wrote, it's been two weeks and the traffic on our quiet rural road has been unbelievable. And this is just a taste of the real chaos I fear could arrive when the busy summer tourist season begins. The issues aren't just inconvenience and public safety. Highway 137 leads to the Thousand Islands Bridge, a vital economic link between Canada and the U.S. Each year, 340,000 commercial and 1.5 million, million non-commercial vehicles cross the bridge. More than $1 billion in trade crosses both ways each month. Unnecessary 401 delays put this trade and the jobs it supports at risk. The work is necessary, but the Minister of Transportation can act to reduce the problems. He can start by working with the OPP and municipalities to improve the traffic management plan, and he can demand all contractors involved put their full resources into the project to get it done faster. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further members' statements. Further member statements. The member from Mississauga, Arendale. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Everyone has contributed to the growth of our province and our country. April being Sikh Heritage Month in Ontario, I would like to state some of the contributions that the Sikh community has made. Initiatives such as Seva Food Bank in my riding of Mr. Garendale, a Sikh-hosted radiothon on CJMR 1320 for the town of Fort McMurray, are numerous efforts to and numerous efforts to raise funds for hospitals and charitable causes express the Sikh principle of selfless giving. Canadian Sikhs are represented in all sectors of our economy. They became a force in the logging industry, construction and land development field, as well as farming in British Columbia. In Ontario, the Sikh community is well represented in our transportation industry, in information technology and other businesses such as manufacturing, retail and construction. Many Sikhs can be heard on the radio and seen on, and seen on TV programs. There are, in fact, more Punjabi language papers in Canada than in India. Sikhs have bravely defended our nation since World War I, including the iconic Bukum Singh, who was wounded in action twice and now rests at the Mount Hope Cemetery in Kitchener. Sikhs have also contributed politically and represented their constituents at the municipal, provincial, and federal levels. Some have also had the honor of serving as ministers. We are very proud of our Sikh community and their, and their outstanding contribution to our great province and country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statement? The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and speak on Daffodil Days. The yellow daffodil has become a symbol of strength, courage, and support for those who are fighting all types of cancer. The first ever Daffodil Day was held in 1957, where volunteers took to the streets to sell daffodil plants to raise money for cancer research. The occasion has since extended to a monthly awareness campaign, which occurs every year in April. The money raised from Daffodil Days allows for the Canadian Cancer Society to fund uh, leading-edge cancer research and provide service supports to patients and their families. Statistics show that two in five Canadians will develop cancer in their lifetime while one in four will die from the disease. Cancer rates increase with age and are more common in males than females. In 2016, 89% of all cancers were diagnosed in Canadians aged 50 years and over, while 44% were in people aged 70 and older. 
Females tend to have higher rates of cancer than males between the ages of 20 to 59 due to their increased risk of breast and thyroid cancer. Speaker, we must not forget that ch children's cancer needs its own enhanced research and support. I'd like to thank the Canadian Cancer Society for starting one of the most successful, well-known disease awareness months and for all of their fundraising initiatives that have helped cancer patients and their families since 1938. Thank you very much to volunteers. Buy a daffodil, save some lives. I uh, thank all members for their, uh, for their statements uh, in the House today. We have normally that would be in the Speaker's Gallery, but I didn't get a chance to know he was coming. This is our Consul General of Turkey in Toronto, Erdeniz Shen. Welcome, uh, Consul General and Assistants. I appreciate you being here. Again, I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees. I beg to inform the House that today the clerk received a report on the intended appointment